وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praise is for Allah and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to exalt the mention and grant peace to our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to his family and his companions This is another episode as part of our short course on the Muslim family brought to you by Al-Madrasa al umariyah and in the previous uh, lesson or the previous part of the course, we had spoken about the ayah in Surah Al-Rum, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Talking about the signs of Allah and that from among the signs of Allah Azza wa Jal that show the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His might and His qadr, His decree and his wisdom and his knowledge is that Allah created husband and wife, he created the spouses. And we talked about some of the benefits of that, we talked about some of the purposes and the goals behind it to achieve tranquility. And we talked about the love and the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts between the husband and the wife. Moving on from that now, I'm going to talk about an ayah in Surah An-Nisa and it's ayah number 21. And I think this has a very strong or a very powerful message as it relates to marriage and its importance in Islam. Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَكَيْفَ تَأْخُذُونَهُ وَقَدْ أَفْطَى بَعْضُكُمْ إِلَى بَعْضُ وَأَخَذْنَ مِنْكُمْ مِيثَاقًا غَلِيظًا Allah said, how could you take it back? Either the mahar. He is talking about the mahar. وَقَدْ أَفْطَى بَعْضُكُمْ إِلَى بَعْضُ when the two of you had gone to each other, I physically, a matter of intimacy. وَأَخَذْنَ مِنْكُمْ مِيثَاقًا غَلِيظًا And those women, I, your wife, has taken from you a heavy oath. مِيثَاقًا غَلِيظًا A heavy covenant. So Allah described marriage as a covenant. And he described it as being غليظ, weighty. Now that tells us that marriage is something very serious in Islam. And it's not something to be taken lightly. It also tells us that it is a covenant. As we said, it's an agreement whereby the husband has certain agreement, things he agrees to and certain expectations. And the wife has something that she, she, some things she agrees to and certain expectations that she has. And that that covenant or that contract is not something which is light. It's not something simple, like a matter of buying and selling, like al-bay' or shira. You might go and buy something and sell it and take another one. And it's something which is ghalid. It's very serious and very heavy in the sight of Allah. And just to understand how serious this oath is in the sight of Allah, جل, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used this term mithaqan ghalidha or similar to it a mithaq which is heavy a weighty covenant for two th other things in the Quran Allah Azza wa Jal used it to refer to the covenant that was taken from the prophets that was taken from the prophets that they would believe in the prophet that was sent after them and they would support him and that covenant that was a covenant to believe in the oneness of Allah and to believe in the prophets that Allah Azza wa Jal sent, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uses a similar word to describe it. And likewise, when Allah Azza wa Jal took the covenant from Bani Israel, and He raised the mountain over them, and that weighty oath that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala took from Bani Israel, Allah used the same words to describe that also. Mithaqan ghalida. So this tells us that marriage is something very, very serious and very weighty. It's not something to be taken lightly. And it is a mithaq. It is a covenant. So there are expectations on both sides. There are agreements that are made on both sides. And it has to be fulfilled by both people. And it's not just a covenant between husband and wife. 
it's a covenant between the spouses and between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know this from something which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, and we'll come to the hadith inshaAllah ta'ala later on. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that we have taken our wives as a covenant with Allah, be with in terms of it being a covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and something that is our responsibility in it is towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not just a covenant between the husband and the wife, but it's also a covenant between the spouse and between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah An-Nisa, Allah Azza wa Jal told us. وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَنْ لَا تُقْصِطُوا فِي الْيَتَامَى فَانْكِحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَثْنَى وَثُلَاثَ وَرُبَعَ فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَنْ لَا تَعْدِلُوا فَوَاحِدَةً أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ ذَلِكَ أَدَنَى أَنْ لَا تَعُولُوا Allah Azza wa Jal said, And if you fear that you will not be just with regard to the orphans, then marry مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ What you are happy with. What makes you happy? From among the women, مَثْنَى وَثُلَاثَ وَرُبَعَ Two or three or four. And if you fear that you will not be just then one or whatever your right hands possess. Here in the ayah, what I wanted to talk about is the ruling of marriage. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَانْكِحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ Marry who, whatever you are happy or whoever you are happy with, from among the women. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us in the ayah to marry. And we know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also commanded us to marry. We come to the next ayah Allah azza wa jal told us in Surah An-Nur in ayah number 32. الْأَيَامَ مِنْكُمْ وَالصَّالِحِينَ مِنْ عِبَادِكُمْ وَإِمَائِكُمْ إِنْ يَكُونُوا فُقَرَاءَ يُغْنِهِمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَاللَّهُ وَاسِعٌ عَلِيمٌ Allah Azza wa Jal, He commanded us and He said, Marry the unmarried among you, as well as the righteous from among the male and female slaves. If they are poor, Allah will enrich them from His virtue, and Allah is wasi'un alim. Allah Azza wa Jal commands us to marry. And we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also commanded us to marry. In a hadith of Anas ibn Malik, He said, رضي الله عنه كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يأمر بالباء وينهى عن التبتر نهيا شديدا ويقول تزوج الودود الولود إني مكاثر بكم الأنبياء يوم القيامة. The hadith narrated by Imam Ahmed was declared صحيح by Nuhibban. This hadith. Anas radiallahu an, he says that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to command us to get married. And he used to forbid us from celibacy where a person deliberately or consciously stops themselves from getting married. In other words, it's not because they just didn't have enough money at the time or they couldn't find the right person up until now, but they consciously and deliberately chose not to get married. And he used to forbid celibacy with a strong prohibition. Nahyan shadidan. He used to strongly prohibit it. And he used to say, marry the one who is wadud and walud. Marry the woman who is loving and will bear you many children. For I will boast of your numbers before the prophets yawm al qiyamah. Actually, this tells us one of the purposes of marriage, and it's another reason why I included this hadith right here, is that first of all, it tells us the importance of marriage, and again, it emphasizes the command of the Prophet ﷺ to marry, and the prohibition of celibacy and a person trying to get near to Allah by not getting married. It mentions all of those things, but it also tells us one of the purposes of marriage is to have many children. and. It also shows you that if the Muslim family is right in terms of the husband and the wife and they are upright and righteous, then inshallah they will have children that are inshallah ta'ala upright and righteous. And that will be a cause for supporting the Muslim nation, the ummah of Islam, that they will become bigger, that they will have a, a larger number. And of course, the ones that the Prophet is going to mention their numbers, they are the righteous Muslims. So it shows you about the importance of 
you know, striving to have righteous offspring. But who is the one then that it is, or what is the ruling of marriage in Islam in terms of the ruling as it relates to fiqh? Is it obligatory? Is it recommended? Is it permissible? Is it disliked or forbidden? Or does it depend on the person? So this is where the scholars, they generally say that the general rule of marriage, i.e. the, the general uh, where marriage fits in for most people, is that it fits in the category of al-mustahab, that which is highly recommended. However, it can become obligatory for a person. It can get to the stage for a person where it is obligatory for them to do so. And that's why al-Qurtubi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned a very nice definition of the one that it is obligatory upon them to get married. He said, al-mustati' al-ladhi يَخَافُ الضَّرَرَ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ وَدِينِهِ He said, the person who is able and who fears for his religion and himself. And that can also, by the way, refer to a man or a woman. A person who is able and who fears for a harm coming to themselves or their religion that can only لا يرتفع ذلك عنه إلا بالتزوج. He said, this person, the only way that they can remove that harm from themselves and from their religion is to get married, then there is no disagreement. There is no disagreement. لا يختلف في وجوب التزويج علي. It's not, there's no disagreement that it is obligatory for that person to get married. So if we say that in a general sense, the ruling of marriage falls under the mustahabbat, the things which are recommended. But we say that it can easily go into the wajib, and particularly in this day and age that we live in today. In this day and age where we live in today, who is it that can say that they don't fear for a harm for themselves or for their religion if they don't get married? Now, what I really liked about the definition of Al-Qurtubi here is that he said al mustatiyah the one who is able. Because some of the scholars mention similar ibarat, similar expressions and similar things. But when they mention these expressions and these things, not all of them mention the one that is able. But in reality, this is essential. It's essential that the person, for it to be wajib upon them, they have to be able. They have to be able. Otherwise, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah doesn't burden a person beyond what they can bear. But a person who is able to get married and they fear for a harm for themselves or their religion and the only way for them to remove that harm from themselves is to get married and that is the person that we say that it is wajib upon them to marry and it goes outside of just being among those things which are uh, mustahab or which are uh, recommended. Marriage is one of the sunan of the Anbiya. Anas radiallahu an narrated أن نفرا من أصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سألوا أزواج النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن عمله في السر Anas narrated that some of the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم they asked some of the wives of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم or one of the wives of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم about what the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to do in secret meaning when he was not in public what he used to do at home when he was not in front of everyone. فَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ لَا أَتَزَوَّجُ النِّسَاءِ وَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ لَا آكُلُ اللَّحْمَ وَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ لَا أَنَامُ عَلَى فِرَاشِ فَحَمِدَ اللَّهَ وَأَثْنَى عَلَيْهِ وَقَالْ مَا بَالُ أَقْوَامٍ قَالُوا كَذَا وَكَذَا لَكِنِّي أُصَلِّي وَأَنَامْ وَأَصُومُ وَأُفْتِرْ وَأَتَزَوَّجُ النساء فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي And the hadith narrated by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Some of them said when they heard how the Prophet ﷺ used to be with his family and how he used to be in secret and what all of the acts of worship that he used to do, some of them said, I'm never going to get married. And some of them said that I'm never going to eat meat. And some of them said, I will never sleep on my bed. In other narrations, that they will fast every day and they will not miss a day, that they will pray the whole night and they will not sleep. 
When the Prophet وسلم, heard of this, he praised Allah and he mentioned the praises of Allah and he said, what is the matter with some people who said this and that? Rather, I pray and I sleep. And I fast and I break my fast. And I marry women. So whoever turns away from my sunnah is not one of me. We learn that marriage is a sunnah from the sunnah of the Anbiya and it's from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that turning away from it is not something praiseworthy not something which Allah Azza wa Jal loves like the person who says I will worship Allah by turning away from marriage or by not giving attention to the marriage and that's also SubhanAllah it's not just about not getting married because maybe a lot of people who are watching this may be married perhaps even the majority but it's also about the person who turns away from their marriage, turns away from the importance of it and says, I'm worshipping Allah. I would rather be spending my time worshipping Allah and they don't give attention to it. The sunnah of the Prophet wasallam is that he would pray and he would sleep. I mean, he would pray some of the night, he would sleep some of the night. Some days he would fast, other days he wouldn't fast. And he got married. And so that shows you that there is no good in turning away from marriage in order to get nearer to Allah or disregarding it or considering it to be something insignificant in comparison to you know, other ways or other means of getting near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from this we learn that it is a means of getting near to Allah and it is something which is important in the sight of Allah and it was important to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In another hadith, the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhuma, and the hadith is in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. He said, قَالَ لَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَا مَعْشَرَ الشَّبَابِ مَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ مِنْكُمُ الْبَاءَ فَلْيَتَزَوَّجْ فَإِنَّهُ أَغَضُّ لِلْبَصَرِ وَأَحْصَنُ لِلْفَرْجِ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّوْمْ فَإِنَّهُ لَهُ وِجَاء this is another hadith generally encouraging marriage and also telling us some of the purpose or one of the purposes behind marriage and also looking at those people who are unable to get married as well. So as we said, this is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu that he said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us, O group of young men, ya ma'ashar al-shabaab. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directed this hadith towards the shabaab towards the young men and the scholars say the reason for this is that they are the ones that it's felt that this advice would be most important for them. This advice goes to all of the Muslims but it's the young men that the Prophet Sallallahu he directed this advice to because it's most likely going to be those who are unmarried who are maybe thinking should I marry or shouldn't I marry. O group of young men, whoever of you is able to do al-ba'a. Now al-ba'a is a word the scholars differed over. Some of them said it is the physical ability to get married, to be able to, to have the physical abilities to get married. But the majority of them said here al-ba'a is the financial ability to get married. So whoever of you is financially able, فليتزوج, let him get married. Whoever of you is financially able, let him get married. Here again, financially able, and maybe we can talk about this in more detail later on, it doesn't mean that necessarily has to own a house and a car and 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 have a huge, you know, highly paid salary and a highly paid job and a big salary and so on. That's not what it necessarily means. But it means that they, he has enough to be able to fulfill that responsibility, to fulfill that act that agreement, and even we could call it that mithaq, that covenant, to be able to fulfill it properly and to be able to say that he actually uh, fulfilled the conditions of marriage properly. That is what is meant by al -ba Now here we have two extremes. We have those people who maybe don't give any, any attention or don't pay any attention to this, to, to the issue of this. And they say, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me and so on. And maybe those people might fall short in their requirements. I, they don't think about the, the, the money that they spend upon their family. They don't think whether they have any, whether there's any difficulty for their family or not. So that is one side of it. 
But the other side of it are those people who keep on delaying and delaying and delaying marriage until it, you know, a point which will never ever come or which may never come, which is just keeping on adding more and more requirements. And likewise, the parents who add those requirements for their children, they say, don't get married until you have this. Don't get married until you finish this. Don't get married until you have at least this much. Don't get married until you have such and such a, a possession or such and such. For example, you, you own your own house and you own your own car and you have such and such amount of money. This is all and also an, an exaggeration and something which is not from the religion of Islam. Rather, the religion of Islam, like in everything, is wasat. It's in the middle. That yes, a person has to bear in mind that they have enough money to be able to fulfill the expectation and the needs of their family. And those expectations and needs differ from person to person. They're not the same for everybody. So if you marry a princess, then you need to be able to provide her with a palace. That's the, the simple reality of it. But people are of different levels in terms of their expectations, their financial uh, expectations and what they need and their, you know, their needs and so on. So ultimately, this is something which differs from person to person, but it is given account in Islam that the, that the man can fulfill the basic requirements of getting married. Faliyat is a witch. Let that person get married. Let that person get married. فَإِنَّهُ أَغَضُّ لِلْبَصَرِ Because this is going to be better in helping that person to lower their gaze. وَأَحْصَنُ لِلْفَرْجِ And it's going to be better in protecting their private parts. That is what is two purposes, or even if we want to gather it together into one purpose and call it chastity. One of the major purposes of marriage, to achieve chastity, to achieve the fact that the husband and the wife no longer look at or no, have no desire or no need to look outside of their marriage to fulfill that, those needs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them with. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us here that a person who gets married will help them to lower their gaze and it will help them to be people who are chast. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّوْمِ And whoever is not able, because there will be people who are not able, because the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ مِنْكُمُ الْبَاءَ Whoever of you has the ability, whoever of you is able. So that means that there are going to be some people who are not able. Those people, فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّوْمِ Let that person fast. فَإِنَّهُ لَهُ وِجَاءَ This will be a means of cutting off their desire. So a person says, I'm finding my eye, you know, sort of wandering from place to place. I'm not, I'm not protecting myself in that regard the way that I would wish. A person says, let that person get married. And then he says, but I can't get married because at the moment, I mean, my circumstances are such that I can't get married. Then if the person is in that situation, Islam gives him an alternative. And that alternative is to fast. And that fast will be a way of protecting that person and it will be a wija, a, a cutting off. It will cut off that person's desires until such a time that they are able to get married, inshaAllah ta'ala. This is something that Allah Azza wa Jal also told us about in the Quran. When Allah Azza wa Jal spoke about the characteristics of the believer, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ One of the things that Allah Azza wa Jal told us about in Surah Al-Mu'minun in ayah number 5, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ Those who protect their private parts, except from their spouses or the ones that their right hands possess, and they will not be blamed for that. So that's another evidence for one of the purposes of marriage, being to achieve that chastity and being to provide a halal alternative to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made haram in that regard. The last hadith that we're going to look at, the hadith of Uqba ibn Amir radiyallahu an, and this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim, that he said, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّ أَحَقَّ الشَّرْطِ أَنْ يُوفَى بِهِ مَا اسْتَحْلَلْتُمْ بِهِ الْفُرُوجِ He said that the most deserving condition for you to fulfill, or the most deserving conditions in some of the narrations, for you to fulfill are those which make the private parts halal. And that just really shows us the seriousness again of marriage and the seriousness of these conditions 
and the shurut, it comes with the huquq, the rights that it comes with and the agreements that are made between husband and wife and how serious and important they are in Islam. We're going to conclude the episode with that hadith of Uqba ibn Amr radiallahu an. And in the next episode, inshaAllah ta'ala, we're going to look at the characteristics of the husband. Those characteristics that we should try to embody in ourselves and that if a person is looking to get married, if there is a sister looking to get married, that she should look for in a husband or that the sister's family should look for in a husband. So we're taking it from a comprehensive uh, sort of uh, viewpoint and try to look at the the characteristics that should be there within the husband, insha'Allah ta'ala. That's what Allah is made easy for me to mention and Allah knows best. Wa salatu wa salam ala bina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.